Hello, good afternoon, everyone. Good to have you here. I'm not Michael Shays, I'm Paul Tranny. Yes, you're stuck with me, but I also have two fantastic people here with me that are gonna make up for you having to put up with me. So, Jesse Thomas, Taylor Crisdale, day two. Hey. Yeah. So excited to be here. Yeah, I guess. Yeah. guess how, how are you feeling about yesterday? Yesterday was good. Yeah, yeah. It's good. Yeah. Pretty loose. Pretty loose. Yeah. Did you get into a groove yeah. today, and yeah, we're gonna be graving today. Yeah. Today good. we're gonna we're gonna make infographics about movie posters. Yeah, mm -hmm. and really today is kind of dedicated, like I guess, to you guys, or is inspired by you because everybody's been making infographics, kind of based on this session. Yeah, really cool stuff. So. And there was some really cool stuff in those. Oh sessions. man, it's yeah. it's amazing. You kind of start out the first of the day, you get a few in, and then just how much people progress throughout the day. It's really Awesome. Yeah. So thank you so much, uh, JC and uh, well Mel and oh Samantha of course is right upstairs. She works for Adobe. But just let us know like where you're from or if it's your first time joining us. It's these guys second day. Where are you guys based out of? Just three, by the way. So, uh, can you kind of describe kind of what you guys do on a regular basis? I guess. Or yeah, I'm based out of DC. Um, Taylor's based out of Australia. Mm -hmm. And you know. Uh, Content marketing has, is sort of the more recent sort of bucket that we've kind of fallen into. So infographics for social is is like 60% of the work we do. Hmm. And then maybe 20%, and I would even include this other bucket of animations in that bucket, because most often those animations are for Facebook or uh, YouTube or Instagram. Uh, and then we do a bit of interactive work, maybe 10, 20% of the work we do in, in the day is like some kind of interactive work. Okay, yeah. nice. No, that is pretty cool. And is this some of your work behind us? Yeah, so this is... There's a lot of logos back right, there. Right, so this is the conversation <laughs> prism from, from years ago. And we're going to teach you guys how to make cate category, categoric list uh, graphics, right? Mm -hmm. So here you've got a bunch of categorized... Uh, these are sections of, of, of the marketing software um, sphere. Uh, and so today we're going to go through different formats of organizing information like this. So when you're yep. looking at this, you can imagine that the logos didn't need to be in color, right? The logos mm -hmm. could have been in grayscale. Instead of using the logo, mm -hmm. we might have been smarter to have written the name out mm -hmm. of, of the brand, right? Um, and so when things like this, uh, just sort of foundational things to kind of sort of build from. Exactly. Yeah, yeah this is, but, uh, and, and really I feel like you guys are all about like getting eyeballs, getting people to like absorb information and probably pretty quickly. Cause that's what I think of when I think of social media. Yeah. They can be cruising by this stuff and it has to be like really easy to get and digest mm -hmm. and kind of pop. Like that's what, why I, as soon as I looked up, I was like, man, this is gorgeous and colorful and I want to know more. <laughs> so this, this is sort of the opposite of our snackable approach, right? So this yeah. is yeah, the kind of thing. Yeah, it's a lot of stuff. Well, yeah, right, because yeah. this is quite dense. Uh, so the, 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 I think the thing ta people take away from this is that, oh my God, there's tons of services to use. Okay. Whereas normally with the snackable work we're doing, we're trying to make concise, we're trying to pull out the one insight and kind of focus in on it. Mm -hmm. um, so what we're finding people doing with this is they're putting it in presentations as a, oh my God, there's so many things for you to think about. Oh, okay. You know what I mean? Yeah. As a wow moment, kind of like mm -hmm. a map of all the wars we're fighting, kind of a scare us kind of a thing. Um, yeah, and do you have like some, I don't know if you have like templates for uh, figuring out how to organize information, like something like this? Uh, templating so far, we, we don't really. We kind of avoid templating. Oh, like you've got good. your kind of fundamentals. It's a scary word templating. for any designer. Like, I don't want to hear the word template, really. I'm like, you can't deduce me to a template. But yeah. those are... Yeah, yeah you've got your fundamentals. Well, that's not really a template. Okay. You've got your fundamentals of, like, base design, like, that, you, that we'll get into yeah. basically straight yeah. away today. Um, hey, you're really the only one with a laptop in front of you, so I think you're going to be doing most of the work yeah, here, yeah. huh? Yeah, So go for me. it. <laughs> do, you, do you mind if I switch to your screen? Yeah, yeah, and also if you could bring cool. up that list of the info that we're just kind of basing this off. Oh, yeah. Uh, oh, that's good. Through. I can display that. So, Give me a second. So, so imagine those graphics that have, you know, with, with the logos, right, the one behind mm -hmm. us, the conversation prism type graphics. We're going to go, we're going to sort of talk about these kinds of graphics, but the project we're going to work on together, and we're posting the brief to the chat, is a poster um, about movies, right? A graphic about movies. Um, so we're gonna utilize the movie posters, we're gonna cut out the heads of actors and directors, we're gonna utilize the box office numbers, um, all sorts of stuff, the genre, uh, the amount of money they made. Um, so poster yeah. art put into categorized So like, okay, you know in the like, conversation prism how we've got the logos of the companies? Uh -huh. We're gonna use movie posters. Okay. Imagine like we're sorting um, yeah. Or just movies, animals. movies in general, movie yeah. information. So you could have just 
Um, it's loosely based around genres or some kind of like grouping, um, mm -hmm. like sections of, of movies that you like. So it could oh, just okay. be horror movies. Um, what we're getting started in today is we're going to try and hit a few genres, but we'll, we will start in one section. So just giving you a preview. Yeah, right. yeah, yeah. All so right. I'll yeah. just get started and then it will uh, it'll become clear. Cool. So grab a, a decent pen and for Rob's sketching. And look over your shoulder and be like, oh, you're really going with that stroke, huh? Okay. <laughs> yes. So we're just starting like with fundamental shapes. So the good thing is that once we have some One info, the layouts. One the layouts. Yeah, yeah. Fundamental layouts. I don't really so. have. Uh, I didn't. I didn't. I don't know if you. Did you want to show the list? We have posted. We want to post the. the oh, list just that to list, the, uh, just so we to could the, um, to the chat thread, please. Yeah. Maybe have that showing on the on the screen. I didn't get it. Oh, you didn't get it. Sorry. <laughs> There's my. Is that right? Let's okay. switch to us full screen. Oh, look at this beautiful. We'll just switch. Look at these, look at these handsome men. Look at you, jo showing up as a team coordinated with the white shirts. I'm into it. Totally works. So, this will be good. Yeah, so when this you're looking at this this reference behind us here, right, imagine, so these are logos, right, and we're using color as, as, as a secondary uh, layer of information here for the category. Imagine if um, these were movie posters, or these were faces of actors, or these were the names of the movies written out, right? Um, that's what we're going to kind of explore today. But so, yeah, we're, sort of now. we're posting the brief that you can use to, to design along with us. Okay, so this will make a lot more sense now. We're back yep, so on, yeah. In. Perfect. So we'll just jump into uh, fundamental layouts. So uh, this one we're, we're going with some like some pie slices. So this one's pretty basic and this is what you just base the uh, uh -huh. the conversation pretty... prism around. So okay. when you look at something that's like quite complex its underlying layer is is pretty simple really. So you can just keep on thinking to yourself we've got this uh, base information that we'll bring up in a second. Um, so there's Oh, my pen stopped working. You're like, of course it stopped working. <laughs> All right, so I'll actually share this list here in a second as well. That's why. It's funny, like the moment you're live, that's when it stops working. That's pretty. That's that. It's on, that's you have that layer above. Oh, it's because I'm on the layer above. That's me. <laughs> okay, so grid. Grid's just this. So depending on your category, so we're gonna choose nine. So you just go, oh, maybe I'll do a grid. Maybe I'll do some columns. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. And this is just different different ways for organizing content. Yeah, yeah. It seems- Well, foundational yeah, layout foundational. structures. So it seems really, wow. I'm, I'm pretty loose on this tablet, so. You're good. So list, so, so everything kind of like boils, it's like what it boils, boils down to. So mm -hmm. basically everything you, you look at, it's gonna have some kind of um, like underlying structure to it. So this one would be, so like bubbles. And draw, or just, draw the frame. Or just like groups. Just draw it, just draw it, just re it. Yep. <laughs> Did you? So this one would be grouping, grouping in categories, just basically in, in circles. So then you've also got uh, like a fan. Just sort of a slice of the prism-ish kind of thing? Yeah, so you just kind of like, it's in a way it's just like your sections, but you just kind of like mm -hmm. choosing a different like base method for um, how you want to lay your information out. Hmm. Nice. So, you can do this many, many ways. Uh, and we basically just need to choose something to go with. Do you want to oh, um, no, bring no, up no, that no, information? No, what we're going to do is yeah. we're gonna, you're going to draw each one of these. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Draw but we'll just bring up that info so that it's clear what, what we're kind of going for. Let's do it. So, and I just posted this to chat as well. Uh, and we'll we'll take a look at it. Here it is. Cool. Just a fun graphic moon here, but essentially movie name, 
So here we've got just some categories, just a bit of information on movies. So you could pick as many as you like. You could do one on just six of them, but basically we've just picked Hackers, which is like a, uh, what? Good tech, yeah. tech oh. choice. Kind of like not, yeah, so 32% on Rotten Tomatoes, so it's as good as you, as you <laughs> think of this. So we're just gonna pick some info that you can basically just grab anywhere. If you Google it, most of this just kind of pops up. Um, the best thing about Hackers was that guy from Scooby-Doo's hair. He had like the little pigtails, and he was like oh, yeah, skating yeah. around. Yeah, 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 yeah. Great. So. Man, was great. Man, you're making my brain work. Today. I'm thinking back to Hackers. Wow, this it's is good. good. It's a good one. Yeah. Remember the net with Sandra Bullock? Oh, the net. Yeah, this classic. is old school. This she would like be fun a, to watch. She these ordered days. a pizza, and it was like a breakthrough. That, um, that was like the intro of the movie: is her like ordering a pizza and her like dial-up. That's awesome. Uh, so now what we're going to do is we're going to take those base structures and we're going to show you um, just with one of them, for instance, how when we're thinking of those variables, right? Yeah. The difference so, between writing out the name of the movie. Having, so you might decide you want these to be your genres. So you could have like, like horror, uh, action type. Exactly, exactly. So then from there, you've got your kind of what you think you're going for. So you could do uh, movie posters. Mm -hmm. Or you could do uh, like just like the logos of the of the name, like from the posters. So that's mm -hmm. all stuff that you can find online. Or you could just write out, well, write out the uh, actual names with whatever font that you like, or just do some typography. Yes. Mm -hmm. hmm? Heads? Yeah, yeah. So you could have one, uh, so you could have multiple movies here with like the lead actor's faces. Mm -hmm. That one's always fun. Yeah. And then you can combine these things, right? So here you've got the movie poster art as well as, mm -hmm. the, let's, so the head could be the actor, the lead actor, or the director. So combine, you can, you can always combine these things as well, as we'll sort of explore later as well. Yeah. Or you can, like, say if you're really into illustration, you could have, like, a Where's Wally, um, like, illustration, full body of all the actors, like, mm. interacting with each other. And then you can, like, there's no reason it can't be genre. So you could have, like, like a Where's Wally of horror characters. You could have a Where's Wally of, like, oh, famous crime. Oh, that would be of, fun like, to say, visually. Like, crime. Yeah, so you can get stuck in however, however you want, but we'll, we'll get into that with the, with oh. the next one. Mm -hmm. Oh, you can also go and kind of work with the base shape that you've got. So maybe it's about, I don't know, how many pizzas are eaten in Ninja Turtle movies. And you could have these as like pizza pizzas. slices. Yeah. So you can basically just go as small or as big as you want based on your strength. If you're more of a vector artist, you'd probably go with something that's um, like big and bold. Mm -hmm. uh, and then from there, like you don't have to always, so that's just your structure. So. Um, depending on what direction you want to go for, like you could have each one of these strands, you could just pick um, the genres not actually sitting within here, you could have your genres here. And then have this as the actual actor standing up. And then have the info out here. So, like they're technically two very different ideas. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Or you could have it as the posters that you want to do actually stacking out here, so there's so many ways that the same information mm -hmm. could be stacked the same. And then as you think about that... Well, right, so so uh, remember, what we're focusing on here is, is like the hero graphic, right? And so with the conversation prism, it, it was just that one thing. But often in this work, it's the magic of the layout where you're combining this hero graphic with perhaps a call out or a timeline or a series of other things. Mm -hmm. So what we're gonna mm -hmm. do now is we're gonna show you, so draw draw me some um, some boxes, so like draw me a layout real quick. So, yep. I'm used to the one. Whoop, there you go. Mm -hmm. I'll okay. get better as so, you go. So draw, draw me a circle right here in the middle that represents the, the prism, and then below it, draw me a timeline. Yeah. Oh, yeah, yeah. Yeah, okay. So this is this is sort of that foundational thinking, um, and b sort of make the timeline fill the entire bottom bit. So once you've, you know, you might have started with a map, you might have started with one key um, hero graphic, and then you want to think: Are there other sort of similarly important um, I I bits of information that we want to display equally as large, or and then do a layout next to this that's got like 
a variety of things. Let's, you know. Oh, yeah, yeah. But draw the layout first. Because yeah. mm-hmm. you can imagine, like, the conversation prism graphic could have just been a smaller element of a bigger layout. Um, Got your hero image, your timeline. It could it could be sort of top. four key elements or you mm-hmm. know whatever. Um, Here's the lead actor. This is yeah, his, exactly. like his fight stats. This is how tough the, he is. Yeah, like a selection <laughs> of the different things because how we've got all. like because we've got gross income. Like you could have each one individual. Sometimes it's it's a lot more engaging to actually have them all interacting within the one graphic. So yeah, it'd be like. Uh, Comparing Star Wars to Star Trek or something like it's a Star Wars movie to Star mm-hmm. Trek. Mm-hmm. We were talking about we did a Star Wars graphic last. Mm-hmm. Yeah, so it's it's almost like if you had the conversation prism layout, and then you have the timeline around here. Yeah, right. So, so the timeline is unrelated to the infra. Yeah, the, so you the could have infographic inside mm-hmm. of it. Sometimes you can sort yeah. of play these tricks so with got the like, layout. You could choose each one of those little bits of data that you've got just from the list that you've put together of movies that you like. So you could have all the different genres and then pick some element from there and then you could just also run them around, um, run them around here. And, and what is the timeline? What would, would be an example of something you'd put on the timeline? Could so the release date? Yeah, exactly. The release date mm-hmm. or you could have, you know, um, when the actor was born, mm-hmm. how old they are. Runtime. It, it could be ages too. So like this timeline doesn't need to be like a linear timeline. It could be mm-hmm. um, the actor's heads by age. Uh-huh. Right. And and yeah. this is this is that sort of think of this as adding layers. You don't always want to do this, by the way, because that's this is how things get too confusing. Mm-hmm. So when we think about like a map of, of the United States, you know, do you need to show all of the highways? Do you need to show where all the capital cities are? Do you need to write out the capital city? You know what I mean? Yeah. The geographic um, uh, structure mm-hmm. of the of the of the ground kind of thing. Because in Google Maps, for instance, you know, you're toggling through those kinds of things for a reason. They don't mm-hmm. overload you with all that. Yeah. So similar here, you don't want people to just not get it and walk away. Yeah, and yeah. we kind of noticed that when we were uh, reviewing the submissions. Mm-hmm. Like, some of them were just overwhelming, and if you saw the last segment, like, the, one of the simplest ones won, actually. Right. No, it was cool. Th- yep, th- and that simple you know. one was great. Easy to read. Sometimes exactly. it's probably... If you and this is uh, that's why I like this is like you you're you can prioritize in terms of reads, but not not everything's yelling at you, you know. For this first one, that's you're looking at the center, and then you can your eyes can mm-hmm. can travel around and exactly yeah. You always want to have a clear definition between so that you're not inferring. Like if it's a definite different set of data, you don't want to infer that like one's a uh, like a key or some like. Mm. So you just want to make sure that people can understand that one section is different to another. And then yeah. you're not meant to pull some part of the top, and still know that when you're looking at the bottom. Mm-hmm. So you just yeah. gotta like. And so, like one example mind. for this one, we've got going this this one here on the left. Imagine if we have faces. So just 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 like draw the circles to represent faces. You know, maybe they're they're categoric, but it's the actors mm-hmm. that act in these different roles. And then below in that empty era area, maybe that's where we're using the movie posters, because mm-hmm. that's why it's important to start with this overview, not of just the information, but also of like what's possible. So like the movie poster art, you actually have the movie poster art that you can grab, the movie mm-hmm. director, the photograph of the director, or the director's name. Mm-hmm. Um, so you go back to that layout? Which one? Mm-hmm. Just go back, go back to my head. Yeah, zoom in on this one right here, right here. Yep. And I wait, it's, uh, so below it, mm-hmm. right here, do, do movie posters. Some, do like one, two, three, four, five, six movie posters and put some type underneath it kind of a thing. And so maybe these movie posters below here are like the top selling movie posters. Maybe that's why they're isolated, right? Mm-hmm. So um, yeah. what we, the reason why we, I, we chose this was we wanted to utilize um, the heads, we wanted to utilize logos, and, and movie posters are just really easy to work with because they're already clipped. Yeah. Um, yeah. yeah. Yeah, exactly. That is good. This is about and it's fun yeah. seeing it all, mm-hmm. how it's all kind of connected. Oh, totally. And remember, the, the, the re- so we're going to spend a bit of time kind of uh, spitballing and remixing. Feel free to comment on what you would like to see. But we're going to make um, a variety of these layouts, pick one, and then design it, and then remix as we go. Mm-hmm. Yeah. And the then, hmm? yeah. Trying to find shape. All in Photoshop. There it is. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. 
pick, take what's a the and, and, pick and the data photo. is just generic yeah, right now? So that I can... Are you, in terms of like the data you guys are using? Oh, go back to the sketches. Turn it up. Go back to sketches. We're gonna keep remaking sketches. Yeah. yeah. So we need to we need to do nine more of those. Okay. Cool. Um. Yeah. For so for the. Structures. So do let's do um do a list. Oh yeah. Mm -hmm. yeah so we're gonna do nine of them. Okay. Yeah. We got work to do. I know. It's like, we got work to do. We got plenty of time. We need a lot of time to kill to entertain these these people. So, All right, so, so the next one we're going to do is a really straightforward one. You go back to this layout over here, the, the, the box. I'm just no, going to zoom right in. Oh, zoom out. Show me the box. I want to see the whole box. Yep. All right, so this one we're going to do a list. So imagine if um, the movie information is um, literally in a list of, of um, the amount of money they've made. Okay. Mm -hmm. So we're going to write out the name of the movie. Actually, just or actually erase those boxes for me, bro. Just so erase, erase these four boxes for me. Oh, okay, that's yeah, so I did that. Um, so right, so we're gonna we, the, the choices when we're thinking of a list, right? We definitely gotta write out the movie name. Um, probably want to use the movie uh, poster art. But we just want to start thinking about how that's gonna work uh, in these layouts. Do you start with like? I think I this would be a, a pretty basic one. Like, would you start with a really basic? Because I'm trying to wrap my head around like the data that we would use, but we're really not getting into that detail just yet. Oh, the data that we've used, this is all just based around that list of um, information that we've got. So you've got this right um, here's the data we're gross using, right? takings, or you've got release date, just the name. So um, we'll be using all of this data. No, no those are optional, right? Yeah. So what we're so doing is creating very various layouts that we're picking and choosing what works for the for the layout. Okay. You know what I mean? Mm -hmm. Like, so it's some like, layouts are uh, going to have the movie art, some of them aren't, but we're always going to maybe use a version of the movie name, which could be written out. Or the movie art, right? Okay. So in this right. example, uh, so like if you were going to do a list type graphic or like a, an overall like bar typed graphic, mm, it's technically a column graphic. Mm. So it's based in columns. Mm -hmm. This one you might be linking it heavily to just gross income. So that could mm -hmm. be your focus bet. So these could be your monetary values. Nice. And then you could sit your posters underneath. Mm -hmm. And then yep. you could clip like an image of the movie into each one of these. Or nice. you could display like additional information in there. So you could have like the, the actor's faces here. Or it could be like standing on top. Yeah, Or it could exactly. be like Rampage where they're like destroying the side of the column or something. Yeah, or you could just like clip them in there, waving hello. Or doing, yeah, exactly, like Rampage, like, like yeah, you know, yeah, there's all types of things. Like, yeah. that'd be a, a later stage thing, but you could, like, have the, um, depending on, like, what the genre is, like, have it, like, a cracked building or, mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. or something yeah. like that. Like, yeah, you die hard, you have Bruce Willis kind of, like, Yeah, exactly. So and a horror like, one, there's, like, like blood Mission dripping Impossible. down yeah. from the column have, like, or something. A little that's man, really like, fun, though, once off. you get the basic data in there, you're like, oh, no, how... How can we have fun with this? Well, that's exactly it, because what, what often people are doing is they're they're creating these layouts that are very complex. And mm -hmm. so we want to sort of talk about how that happens. But at the end of the day, it's about these foundational structures and then very subtly adding creative layers on top of those without confusing that simple, perfect mm -hmm. layer. Yeah. Um, yeah, so that's like an example is like how we started out with just like the slices one. Um, like this one, like, it works well with genres, so you'd be kind of like focusing on the structures really based around the genres of the different things that you're doing. Whereas, mm -hmm. like, you could also switch this to be more focused around, like, the monetary value of it. So you might have that same information, your poster in there, and then however far it's getting out here, um, you could have yeah. these like this, depending well, on how much they size. Have. Well, and the obvious one would be size, right? So you could have... Um, the size of the poster relevant to the scale of their, um, exactly. of their take at the box office. Exactly. So that's almost like you're zooming down a level, so you decide that you're working on something that's around this pie layout. So you could take your, take your slice and think, oh, I want to have the sizes of the posters related to the income that it makes. And that so, could even be, yeah, okay. Yeah, so it'd be like this, where you have to start think like, your critical thinking has to come in here. So if you want to have your larger posters to be indicative of the income that it's making, you're obviously not going to set this value to be like high income and this to be low. 
because you're going to run into trouble trying to fit all your big large posters in the inner yeah in a section of yeah. your overall pie mm -hmm. it's just going to be a mess so that's you'd start out and just think yeah well, for that one you would just do small. placement and you wouldn't do size that one would just be placement if yeah, you were doing on the scale. Exactly. Just like we did with the conversation prism. Right. There's no um, like value to the actual size difference of the logos. Sweet. Do a, do a fleshed out, do a new layout that's a conversation prism style one that's showing size and scale. Show size and scale, right? Mm -hmm. To do a full layout. Well, I'm just focusing on that that one section. Okay, cool. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah so it's really interesting. in that example, we'd just take the posters and you'd just be laying them in. So you'd collect all the posters of um, a particular genre. So this one that we're kind of focusing around is that it's like a, a genre. So this could be like uh, like horror movies. Mm -hmm. So it's it's you basically just start like right above and you're looking at... So this is all based around just this layout. But mm -hmm. then you're zooming in on this one section, mm -hmm. yeah, just, get a, just to get a good feel for what you're doing. So you've got to always keep it in your mind that this one's going to be stacked mm -hmm. with with the others. And then also, there's so many so many ways you can do it. So because you're working with with a pie type layout, you can technically have a value to this. So. Um, like this could be a 20% section of the pie and that's like how many people like love horror movies. We don't have that data there, but it could be based on mm. six movies and this is... Uh, or the box office share, the, the box share of the genre or whatever. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So what you got to think there is you might end up with hackers, <laughs> for <laughs> example, which might be 1%, did not do so well. Um, which you're going to run into trouble because you're going to be trying to jam your poster mm -hmm. in there. Well, but in there, that would be the one where you would write out, that would be an example where you might write it out. Exactly. And yeah. remember, back to the movie poster art, right? When you, you think it's a movie go for this poster art, art yeah. you can use the art or the written out name, and, mm -hmm. and that sometimes is super necessary, especially when you're dealing with shrinking movie posters down. In fact, if you're shrinking the movie posters down, you probably want to write the name next to it. That's how problematic that can be. And that's why sometimes typography is just a great place to kind of fall back on. Because so whenever yeah. you're using logos, the minute you start shrinking logos, oh, it becomes very, very, very yeah. tricky. Yeah. This, I like the star, just, someone just mentioned Star Destroyer. So mm. that's a good example. Like uh, overall, you're like, you can pretty quickly sometimes come up with ideas because you could be coming up with like the power of the different, uh, I don't know, um, Jedis. So you could have this laid out, your overall layout's a Death Star, and then you've got the faces of your actors. The play of different characters. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. And then you could have the movie poster of when they showed up here. And then the gross income of like the particular Star Wars film. Mm -hmm. So there's no reason that you couldn't make the whole thing about Star Wars. It wouldn't have to be like genres around here. You're just kind of cutting that out, and you just love Star Wars. So that would be a Star Wars graphic, depending on whatever you want. Um, yeah, this okay. is interesting. And I'm just kind of like looking online. Oh, I'll be able to do that here. That's why I was doing this one. This is fascinating. Like even, you know, like this stuff, for instance. Right, right, where they're, yeah. in fact, it's they're just... It's kind of what you're mm -hmm. talking about, essentially. Right. Well, in this case, there's just one layer of information for that for that art piece at the top, right? That's the the share yeah. of the box office or whatever, which doesn't totally make sense. I'm right? not so, so sure that's the toys. Like, why, why is? Yeah. But yeah, why is that top bit? You know what I mean? Like, why is this toys? What what does this have to do with toys? Obviously, other than because using it's that shape 15, as a, 15 billion. No, 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 no. I'm saying that's you know clearly that's that's the portion of it, but it doesn't have any conceptual. Connection. It's just using that as a shape. Yeah. Which is kind of confusing. They could have put the toy. They could have filled all that blue in with the toys. For instance. that would. But then you'd be. It wouldn't be recognizable as the Death Star. Mm -hmm. This is the problem of. Yeah. Overly trying. And to it, I think it. I. You know that it's pretty recognizable. So I think maybe yeah. You could have used the shape. Maybe. Yep. Maybe. This is interesting. Like. 15 billion in toys. Oh, this is from a, so Bloomberg did an incredible uh, special. Uh, like issue about the Star Wars um, 
revenue from all that stuff. It's like they make more from like the betting, the Star Wars betting section of ah, the, it's like it's like billions really? of dollars just on these like the toys, these random things. It's incredible. Have you ever seen getting off subject, but uh, the there's a toy sort of mini docu series on Netflix that mm-hmm. you'll have to watch. They have oh the Star toys, Wars. of course. They did the they did the G.I. Joe. Yeah, Barbie. G.I. Joe. Yep. Mm-hmm. Fascinating. And it's interesting yeah. that because one thought is that uh, you know the contract basically ran out for Star Wars and they got to renegotiate it. And once Lucas did, that's when he released the three new movies. Mm. After that toy contract ended. Right. Yeah. And then he made three new ones. And he said, no, now I can take, you know, not 2% or whatever small number that was. What was it's also fascinating. Was, what was also interesting in those really documentaries good. is that they, like for He-Man, you know, what it, they created like the animated series just to sell the toys and all this yeah, stuff. Yeah, like, they, they like created the toys first and then they realized that we don't have a story around so, this. So they, so they, they funded, or they, before the toys were released, they funded comic books and an animated series to promote yeah. this, what they hoped would be this incredible yeah. success. Yeah, and then there was yes, an the issue toys of, that made us, that's what it is. The toys that made us, thank you so much, Noel. Um, yeah, so there were some like some issues. Oh, you're just marketing to us kids, and that's when they started tacking on like uh, really like moral messages right. on the end of them, saying, right. "No, we're teaching these kids lessons." Right. That's why they had that with GI Joe. Right. Those well, were the since days, we're talking man. about Disney, because Disney now owns Star Wars, over the history of of television, like. T- television networks f- were forced to sign deals, for instance, the Brady Bunch, the, like that far back, mm-hmm. where they had to have episodes filmed in Disneyland and Disney really? World. Yes, wow. and so that they're just incredible at the mul- yeah. multi-angled marketing strategy. Yeah, you would never, would have never guessed. Were you guys Star Wars fans growing up? Did you have any Star Wars toys or no? G.I. Uh, Joe. No, definitely yeah. G.I. Joe. Sure. G.I. Joe yeah. for me. I had Same tons here. of Star Wars. Tons of Star Wars. I had tons of He-Man. I didn't have very many Star Wars. I, I, actually I didn't have had, any Star Wars. I had He-Man. I had He-Man, G.I. Joe. Yeah. Same mm-hmm. here. Yeah. Oh, yeah. He-Man. Star Wars, we were like oh, this. No. We would crush. My He-Man toy would crush your Star Wars toys. G.I. Joe. Guess what? You can't even uh, bend their arms. You hear me, Voodoo Val? But we were also watching the, in the Teenage Mutant Ninja Turtles. We were watching all these shows. Like yeah. I've seen probably every episode. And then The Simpsons. They, Simpsons has action figures, but they don't... They're not like that. Wasn't that's a GI true. Joe action figure moment. That could have yeah. been. Like, still be, could be. Yeah, that's true. Yeah. Huh. Oh, just marketing, franchising, franchising these. I brought in a couple. Speaking of toys, here's your here's Thor. A little bobblehead. Yeah, from the new Thor. He's fun. So Taylor's just pulling Ooh. in some of the assets. Looks away. We'll do a quick giveaway while you pull that stuff in. If okay. that's cool, gives you a sec. Mm-hmm. Random giveaway right now. So just be active in the chat. Be like, yes, He Man's my favorite, or I like, I like Star Wars, and I like Spock most of all in Star Wars. I'm giving, I'm giving her a hard time. It's not. Oh. Yeah, I'm doing that on purpose. But be active in chat. We'll just do a random giveaway of these fantastic mm-hmm. prints. Ooh. I call them prints because it makes them sound fancier. No, they're oh, this yeah. is a because pr- they are. I mean, this is high quality paper, and these oh, were made beautiful. on previous streams. Jingwei's. It's beautiful. Again, uh, you know, no more than six hours on that. Uh, and I like this one because this is actually we can even go sort of full screen so you can see this. Um, Rob Zilla made this, and he actually made a chain brush. So we just drew these mm. lines and then spray it. Because you know, if you had to draw all of Mr. T's chains, it would take forever. No, that's brilliant. So many. Christine Heron's travel, SFO. This is kind of fun. It's awesome. You know, which again, there's a ton of. This is almost infographic like, by the it way. It is? Yep. Mm-hmm. You know, kind of feel it. So, well, because there's so much, you know, because there's so much, that's why they're so, so cleanly. It's almost like each one is a. A mini a graphic, infographic, snackable thing. Mm-hmm. Into it. So, just be active out in. Angelina Jolie's face. Look at her. That's Pretty cool. Short haircut. That Whenever I think cool. of these, like the cutout sort of photo infographic style as a reference, I always love to go back and look at the New York Magazine infographics. They do such a beautiful job of cutting out uh, photo elements and using them on these very sort of simple graphs and um, it's a totally underutilized uh, trick. Huh. New York Magazine. This is completely spicy. It's 
by Angelina Jolie's face. It's just fun to look at, you know, and again, just a couple quick Google searches on infographics, on posters, and oh, I, mean, yeah. I, I could easily have wasted multiple hours going yeah. down that route. Fascinating. Well, that's why it's like uh, buying these infographic annuals or like collecting them or keeping them, it's like, man, it's like there's so much you can just kind of reference. Oh, I see what you're saying, like that stuff. Sorry, I clicked on it. That kind of thing, but there's they're, they heavily use, but that's to me a beautiful... So the use of the, everything I love about this, but the use of photography is, mm -hmm. I think, one of the most important things that we take away from this inspiration. You very rarely see photographs used in infographics. Here they're actually, so the, the, the dollar is sort of, you know, the, the image, the, you know, that photograph is part of the infographic, whereas the top bit there, those are just cut out heads. Go back and find mm -hmm. another example. It's, it's actually a different kind of graphic I wanted to show you guys. Yeah. Scroll down. Like this one. Right here. So, you know, so, so. Jin. Oh, help me. I knew that was going to happen. So, yeah, so see this guy? So, see how there's um, these beautiful cutout images? This is the kind of style we're going for for this. Ah. Yeah. Super fun to look at. But also easy to make. And also easy to concept because you're thinking, oh, head's going to go here. Great. Put that mm -hmm. little circle there. Come back later and do that. Um, a and lot they of this. Do is, this like maybe what every week or something. They do, like, and it's highly templatized. Yeah, no, wow. I, it, this is this is um, a great example. And what they're doing there with the annotations, ah. yeah, everything's explained. Mm -hmm. They do, I think, just the right amount of type um, for these graphics. That is pretty cool. Oh, Looks cool. like we have one real fast. Colby Kleitz. Colby, Colby Kleitz, C L I T E S. I'm not sure if I'm saying your last name correctly. You win three fantastic prints. All right, that we'll send your way. Uh, Gus will deliver them by hand to your doorstep and then giggle and run away. Because that's what he does. But congratulations, mm -hmm. Colby. So this is fun. Uh, hopefully everybody's getting inspired by this because again we have the basically the challenge which is all about creating infographics and honestly like finally we have a, you know a session where we're actually yeah. diving right into well and make one with us make make um, uh, an infographic like this well, about but we we are doing health today oh that's so, yeah. true if you have Do, extra time uh, but you could still tie it into like a movie like yeah. the healthiest movies versus the mo like most unhealthy movies. Yeah, like I would say movies, like something I like duplicated, so you're showing twenty different ways of the same thing, though. Yeah, I'm just getting the same thing. Yeah. Colby, hopefully you're with us. Congratulations. Hello, Samuel. Greetings from California. That's where we are. I don't know why it's done. San Francisco, specifically. So. So we're just. Uh, I'm just checking the info into a layer in Photoshop, and. The zoom is really freaking out on me. Garafi, thank you. Thanks for that reading your comment. I mean, if you think about it, even Rotten Tomatoes is based off of almost like an infographic of no, like it absolutely a tomato, is. right? It like, absolutely is, yeah. And the iconography of it being a red tomato or the, mm -hmm. or the splat, splat or the tomato splat. or whatever. Oh, yeah. that's what it is. Very subtle. <laughs> My arm was yeah. rubbing on the, uh, on the pad. Oh, I, I hate so it was registering your, like, your elbow. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> All right. We're now good. We're good now. There he is, Colby. Congratulations, bud. Losing my mind. Got these three prints for okay, you. Okay, good, good. What is your favorite movie? And Back to the Future. Thank you for just having a clear answer. So awesome. Back to the Future. I think Back to the Future is like a a non-religious, um, uh, almost like the Christmas story. Uh, like it's that big of a story, right? The Christmas story was about like mm -hmm. the ghost of Christmas past, present, and future. Oh yeah. Back to the Future is this incredible story that, because Mr. S there's, um, It's a Wonderful World has a similar kind of, mm -hmm. they literally pulled from the Christmas story. So Back to the Future combines so many of those themes and over those three films and all the other projects that is potentially, I think, the ultimate film. Oh, that's... That's awesome. What about you? Uh, Raiders of the Lost Ark. That's a good choice. That's yeah. a great choice. But I also like Thor Ragnarok a lot. Because that also yeah, spoke to the 12 year really old good. in me. I was yeah. like, yeah, beat him up. Play that rock and roll Led Zeppelin and be humorous. 
because I like the director. It's really good. I feel like any of the any of the greatest movies ever can't be from the last twenty, like from the last ten years. I, I know like all the great movies are from like the seventies, but to, it's like also the, very like the nostalgic. The but they hold, they still like hold up really well. Yeah, it's the They're nostalgia that kicks in for you, isn't it? What's your choice, Taylor? Yeah. Oh, best movies like all of the Star Wars, all of the original no, best movie. Star Wars. Yes, you get one, one movie. Yeah, we're forcing Star Wars. The one that I watched that most people don't like is the third. Oh, third yeah. episode. Uh, Return of the Jedi. Yeah, yeah. That's what I watched most of the kid. I had the box set, like the gold Darth Vader box set. I used to watch that basically Just back to wear, back. Wear That's that most thing my childhood out. is watching Star Wars. Nice. The third cassette tape. That's good. I remember my little brother fell VHS. asleep during that movie. I'm like, how could you fall asleep? Oh, I fell asleep. Kid. I fell asleep during the Matrix when that came out because oh. it was like a late screening, you know. Oh yeah. <laughs> So we want to hear what your favorite movie is. We got the village in there. Cool. And what about like design movies? Like, ever, has everybody seen how, like Helvetica, the documentary? And there's actually I did not. Uh, being a designer. That was incredible. Yeah. I oh, did, all I those. Think I, I don't know if I was like on a plane or something. It wasn't. Well, like, that guy has done a bunch of di- all of his documentaries are worth seeing. God, name escapes me. I, f- that guy's I, f- great. I feel bad saying that, but yeah, I, I don't know. You know, it's. It's interesting because the heady movies, documentaries, you will put on your little playlist. Mm-hmm. But when you go to the hotel tonight, you're going to turn on Simpsons or something. Mm-hmm. What you watch right now might be different from, you know what I mean? This is totally. kind of interesting. No, the totally. Whole. totally. Uh, Lucky Number 11, Helvetica. Okay, Goonies, Matthew Manning says Goonies. Great Goonies one. is great. Yeah, also really good me was also from good. Spielberg, also directed by the same crew that directed Back to the Future and done uh, right around the same time. Um, in fact, all of the some of my favorite films were, were created by Spielberg back to back around the same time. Indiana Jones, crazy? Back to the Future, Goonies, it's incredible. It's like Kelly Marshall, all, the crew, literally worked on from back to back to back. Really blockbusters, and the wow. people that were involved were just everyone you can imagine. It's incredible. Yeah, that is big would cool. be another one. Big, big was fun. and um, Ferris Bueller's Day Off would be traditional choices for me as well. Like getting away from the mm-hmm. kind of. Imp- Important. We're talking about softer stories. Yeah, big is super fun. Big is super fun. Must super. It's good. Despicable Me. Yeah, we have modern classics. We can talk about. I guess Magnum Force. Um, Close Encounters of the Third Kind. And I think it's wild that he turned around and uh, uh, directed Schindler's List, too. Schindler's List was incredible. I don't know if I would choose it as my favorite all-time film, but yes, that is. I I just like how it's. He was probably at the time, and have you seen? There's like the documentary on Spielberg, but he was like kind of producing all these Mm -hmm. super fun movies, Mm -hmm. and was probably getting flack on uh, producing something like The Godfather. Mm -hmm. Just like, hey, you Mm -hmm. know what? I'm gonna go ahead and here's Schindler's List. Guess what? It's all in black and white. It's longer than you're gonna expect. Guess Mm -hmm. what? It's gonna win all these awards and probably Mm -hmm. be the movie of the year. It was based Mm -hmm. off of a very successful book. Cool. Written, so by, I'm, written by an Australian guy. I'm basically just remixing now that my elbow is not zooming around the page. <laughs> um, the actual like note of information. So um, love it. Do more practical ones. Man. That was probably the, the Angelina boxes, Jolie's yeah. like. Yeah, that's what I'm doing now. Okay. Yeah. Like her first, I don't know, like first major film role. It was her breakout film role. Yep. Right. There was this and like, then all I can think of is like Girl Interrupted is another one. Yeah, she, she somehow became famous. I mean, maybe her relationship also helped stat it. Maybe it's that haircut. She's like, hey, look it, I can pull off this haircut. What am I Not many people can. It? Oh, it's what it's like. There we go. So I probably get rid of this, the head, and turn all this look back on. So it's just like those nodes that were within that that pie slice. You're just kind of pushing around. Put, I'm doing that again. You're just kind of pushing around that information. So, like, there's no reason that you can't go like this. 2001. Yep. I don't actually think I've seen 2001. It's I, been every on. time I try watching it, I can't do it. Okay. Yeah, that's another good. <laughs> do you question. know who directed like, 2001? What? Uh, no, I'm not a fan. Stanley Kubrick. Oh, Stanley Kubrick. And I felt like, I fell in love with Stanley Kubrick's other films that weren't so kind of like some of the, I don't know. I like some of Stanley Kubrick's films. I don't like all of them. Yeah. But other Stanley Kubrick films you might not also have enjoyed. 
How do we feel about Stanley Kubrick? That's kind of almost like, I think maybe like my, my parents would be into it, mm -hmm. or it might be an older generation thing. Yeah. It was probably too heady at the time for me. I was into, you know, probably Star Wars or something else, yeah. as opposed to watching. I was probably 12 years old. I'm, I probably wasn't interested in 2001 A Space Odyssey. But I would think that uh, The Legend of Krull was much more awesome. Labyrinth. Well. Labyrinth. <laughs> You remember Legend of Kroll? I love all the, I love 80s sci-fi. No, I love everything that Jim Henson's crew touched, right? Okay. They were making, you know what I'm saying? Because yeah. like all of those films, they used the, the Jim Henson special effects mm -hmm. crew and they were making these sets with puppets and... Yeah, that Labyrinth. was all David Labyrinth. Bowie, the soundtrack. Yeah. Jennifer Connelly, a young Jennifer Connelly. Yeah, Incredible. really young. Wow. Incredible. Huh. Yeah, it's fun stuff. So within this, we're basically just, well, I'm just... Pushing around. You're doing all the Having work. We're just kind of yeah, just yeah, yeah. away over here. This is like, uh, <laughs> it's, it's been pretty, pretty interesting actually. So you're just kind of thinking to yourself, if you've got these and you've got your poster, how do you want to lay this inf information Ooh, I out? like it. So okay. you've decided you want to have a pie slice, right? So you're going to have uh, like the different heads in there or you could mm -hmm. have... Uh, like characters in there holding the posters, or you could have the poster with the character head next to it. So you'd want to uh, jump in here, grab a poster out. And, and remember, what, what, what Taylor do, is doing here is, is sort of making a, a design prototype. You know, he's sort of moving quickly from UI to design, style, creative direction, just kind of thinking and a kind of talking as he's kind of moving things around and that that is kind of the process with these kinds of things yeah, yeah. just kind of just getting ideas yeah. down sketching them yeah. on a piece of paper moving things around seeing how they fit it doesn't always uh doesn't always look amazing but it's actually the quickest the quickest way is like don't push yourself to uh to kind of like polish it at each stage especially in the beginning just like grab your content give it a push around uh, and then you can always, you just polish it up at, at the end, especially with infographics because you're dealing with a lot of information. Um, if you try and like get too granular at the beginning, then uh, you yeah, just you run into trouble straight in away. Yeah. yeah, you can also just, you can kind of restrict yourself. So like if, for instance, I'll just do this. So if I went like this, and yeah, I was going to do it each point, each point like this in here then if I went ahead and I did all the typography and I'm gonna like do a really amazing design all around here. Mm -hmm. Like all around this area. And then I've got, say like all icons that I've done for the different like genres. If I went in there and did all the vector art and then did all the illustration, and then I get in and I try and jam it in this pie slice, mm -hmm. and then I realize I'm only, I can only fit one per pie mm -hmm. slice, um, then you, you're basically just wasting your time. So if you just push it around with these like, well it might look um, quite crude when you're just pushing around like um, some photos and some text around on the screen, it's the best way to, just the best way to work. Just keep it very loose. Yeah, exactly. But, yeah. No, I like it, and just like all black and white. It is a step up from, we are actually getting into some real images though. You do have the hackers, you have her, her head cut out, kind of as an example. Yeah. Mm -hmm. um, so you use like the, can you take, take this, like, we need to separate the UI from the design, right? So you need to be using sort of like the X for the image instead. And we want to see, I want to see like a grid of layouts, right? Where oh, the layout going on here. Yeah. yeah, yeah, we can do that. Okay. So let's deactivate it all. Shawshank Redemption is good. Do you remember who wrote the Shawshank Redemption? Uh, it Stephen King. Yes, Stephen King had some great ones like Misery. I don't know if I'd call that like my favorite movie, but that definitely <laughs> deserves a conceptual <laughs> award. Yeah. So if you put in, there's a lot of like UI really in infographics, like this kind of fundamentals that you'd work with when you're working with web design. So you jump in and say if you know that you're going to work with, with an image, you can really just do this, put yeah. an X over it. And then it. do a head, mm -hmm. a, a head with a smiley face for the head. Mm -hmm. yep. So you could just think to yourself, oh, I want to do this. 
Uh, or maybe I want to uh, have like the actor standing here. The color layer around for the genre. Hmm? The color, the color border for the genre. Yeah, exactly, oh, exactly. Yeah, so you're cool. thinking about all this, like this info key. that you've got. Mm -hmm. um, whereas the genre, if you're working with a with a pie slice, you'd probably set your genre to be everything that's within that within that one slice. But yeah, if you I have like genre, that. I like you the, could the have the whole idea of the color key. Oh shoot! Yeah, we'll get you some some juice. Running out of power. So you could have your actor standing there if you can find like good full body shots. That's mm -hmm. also a good mm -hmm. point. Is like oh, that could be the character or something. Yeah, yeah exactly. Cool. So it could mm -hmm. be the main actor, um, and it could be cropped too. You know, because like mm -hmm. you could imagine finding, um, yeah, not a perfect shot, but it's sort of like the torso shot that could still work. You know, it's a yeah, like cropped body on the left there. Yeah, that's cool. That also brings up consistency. So like if you find the most perfect, do like a big number, like two point one billion in the world. Mm -hmm. What are you gonna say? Sorry, perfect. But no, we do it in the corner. No, in the corner. Yeah. 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 Terminator 2, yep. Yeah. Terminator 2 was a classic. Terminator 3, unfortunately, was so bad that we're taking points off of Terminator 2. <laughs> Total um, Recall. So this Robocop. Oh my god. Total Don't get recall. me started. Robocop was the ultimate, that is the ultimate science Robocop. fiction. That is such a perfect story. Robocop <laughs> 2 was great. Robocop 3 and 4, not so great. I don't even remember. I only remember the original one. So obviously the next... I don't, I don't remember. It was set in a bankrupt Detroit, and Detroit is like on a path. Oh, yeah, yeah. To that was like... Bankrupt. Yeah, that's funny. <laughs> Robocop 2 was really a great sequel. If you've ever seen oh, Robocop 2. That was a great In one. ages. And again, Robocop utilized... Was it Henson Studio or, or that group? I think it was, it was it was like the Render Man group maybe to do those incredible stop motion um, scenes mm -hmm. where like the the bigger kind of tank robot would be moving yeah, around. Mm -hmm. Those were like stop motion animations that they wove in. Robocop's oh, wow. incredible, man. Robocop is. I would a, like to watch that again, just because I think stop ma yeah. motion was still pretty I mean, right. pretty realistic. Well, and real yeah, yeah. real special effects like mm -hmm. physical set based. Yeah, exactly. Oh, such a great film. I love those. I love the stop motion, like yeah. Jason and the Argonauts and Clash of the Titans, all mm -hmm. that stuff. Back in the day. What about like the newer stuff, like Isle of the Dogs? I haven't seen Isle of the Dogs Isle, is like pushing the the envelope on stop motion because they're utilizing stop motion effects with like the faces and the eyes and stuff. I just I don't, people had never really seen that before, uh, so we need more of those like magical mm -hmm. creative productions that have like real. Work put into the special effects. Um, okay. Hopefully, people will pay for so it. So much work. I just look at that. That's like a labor of love. It just I seems know. like so much, <laughs> like so much work. Phil Knight's son started a studio called Leica, and they, I think, are still oh, yeah, in the business. Uh, did, they did the a cam? couple. The stop motion. The stop motion studio. They did like a few. Oh, okay. What was the one? It was like. Uh, Caroline 3D was their first production. Oh, okay. And then they've done a number since, but that they basically wanted to create a stop motion motion picture studio that was going back to the roots of mm. not oh, totally thinking of the, the productization of it. Um, yeah. I don't know Ray Harryhausen. So this is basically, we're just pushing around the same information the way that you would kind of think about like a website, but uh, it brings up a point that there's so much information that you need to collate within an infographic. So say if you come and you find this perfect um, full body photo of Angelina Jolie, like maybe in, You're in really Hackers, it just happens to Angelina be. Angelina Jolie. Or she's in the <laughs> Hackers film. <laughs> so um, if you find that, you can't just base uh, one of your nodes on it. It could be your feature one. If it's only used once, then you could possibly use it that way. But um, you're setting yourself up almost for failure because say you've got another 24 movies to find, oh, man. you might not find full body shots of them, so then you're trying to like uh, then you're work in... The, then you're using the torso shots. Exactly, so if you come yeah. in to like use the torso shots like almost like your profile would be on like Google or Facebook, then you kind of know that it's going to be a bit more flexible and you can just kind of crop your photos in. So there's just kind of like future proofing it while you're um, working. Yeah. So that's a good way of like 
because you're always kind of keeping this in mind that you're kind of working with this um, pie chart if you decided to do a pie chart layout. Um, whereas if you're working with a grid and the grid kind of like just had them from torso up, then you know that's that's a bit safer. Yeah, also. exactly. Yeah. Yeah, that's true. I mean, that's otherwise, I mean, this, some of this just looks like a lot of work. You know what I'm saying? I'm like, ah, just go with the movie poster art. You know what I'm saying? Yeah, uh, yeah exactly. Depending on the, the amount of data the number of movies. Well, and that is the beauty of, of this style of graphic. All, you know, lists and categorized lists are pretty straightforward as we drew out those mm -hmm. structures, right? I mean, yeah, you, you can just start at the top. You know, if it's ranking top 10 box office, sometimes mm -hmm. you overthink how complex it should be. And I think it's almost like a, a challenge that we give ourselves. How complex can the layout be when it's actually the opposite, probably, that's needed? When you're doing it as a service, for, the, mm -hmm. for a client and as a design agency, you kind of do need to show lots of kind of different options, whereas maybe as a journalist, you're more concise because you don't have the time or the resources to do some of these other options. Mm -hmm. Yeah, so that brings up the point that like at a very base level, you've always, you've always got text. Like if you've got information, you've got text that you can use. So like if you don't have all the movie posters or you just don't really have anything at hand, maybe you're a typographic artist and you just really want to um, get you know a really good project together mm -hmm. using text. This is one way where you could just do type typography of the hacker's movie name, and then just set, set your text under. So you can do that a variety of ways. You could say take out that that pie piece, and then s make the text larger. That's for hackers if it's uh, like the oh, highest yeah. grossing. So you can have it like in relation to how big they are within like there. Like a word cloud style. Yeah. That's in one way typography is very flexible. So you can, um, you know, make something that's a little bit smaller, still get the information across. Mm -hmm. But then when you blow something up really big, t um, images and that kind of thing is sometimes hard to come by. Also it gets expensive if you're trying to use like um, um, stock imagery. Yeah. Um, but that gets yeah. a little tricky because like, so, and even kind of like how you're showing here, if you're just using the text, I don't know. Like, mm -hmm. what, what if you're using Lord of the Ring, Lord of the Rings, Return, Return of the King? Like, that's yeah. super long title compared exactly. to Holes. Yeah, that's so, like right. a, that's probably like something you'd kind of run into too. Ha yeah, it happens all all the mm. time. So that's why you're always trying to always step back. So you're thinking about your individual pieces of information of the whole, and you just got to always keep it in the back of your mind. Um, you've got that, that base structure that you need your information to work to. So you can always have some call outs for things that are more interesting, like place them on top, and that can be something that's a bit more specific and maybe um, a bit more rigid in where you'd be able to use it. Whereas something um, like what's on the screen, exactly. So if you design it so that um, hackers is perfectly placed and you've got hackers written 10 times in a box, that's not going to work out because <laughs> the moment that you've got Lord of the Rings or you've yeah. got like... Um, well, so, so that's why, okay, in this case, yeah. we're actually sort of skipping steps. You're never really supposed to use the real words when you're doing these conceptual layouts, right? So you're supposed mm -hmm. to use Latin. Yeah, so that, that is exactly. the And when you're doing Latin, you, you know how long you're saying, oh, back to the future. Three words, okay. Well, you know, you're just understanding blah blah blah. You're, con you're con what I'll often do yeah. is once I do some real titles like this, I'll just fill it in, knowing that you know back to Lorem IP to. No, this is a hard brain exercise. No, but you know what I'm saying? Right? Yeah, so I totally you're, do. Yeah. You're just typing it out so that it literally does kind of fill. It's, that's yeah. actually what you want to be doing. Um, yeah, or just grab yourself a big chunk of Lorem and and. Um, paste it in there, yeah. like grab little different sections, because it can sometimes um, become more confusing if you're just starting with the same word again and again. Like yeah. It just gets it across. But what if you don't know Latin? Just kidding. Latin are No, if you don't know Latin, do what I did, and I just wrote mm. super, you know, super, super long title. What you learn very quickly is Latin is actually the best way to do it, because you either have to kind of go through and customize it a bit, what I do is, because sometimes it's too much work to go and grab, to go to that URL and grab, you know, the, the lorem ipsum te text. So I'll just write out that sentence and then repeat it, repeat it, repeat it, and then just delete some chunks out of the paragraph. And, mm -hmm. you know, so you just kind of get that kind of... Mix it up. Mix yeah. it up. 
nowadays. Yeah. So make make a layout, man. Hmm? Make make more of a layout now. Let's focus more. Yeah, on. yeah. I'm gonna just like focus in. So the, everybody's bringing up some good points because some people want to see like another, uh, you know, Wayne's World or this and that and another thing. But I think JC says. It's just, dis- we're just talking about movies. But it's disappointing oh, yeah. when you have an Anchorman 2 or a Zoolander 2. Like, be prepared for it to bomb, you know what I'm saying? I don't know. Well, that's interesting. Movies. So the, 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 gra- the graphic could be, like, movie sequels. And yeah. it could be ranked by box office. And then you could have the posters sort of lined up. And so some are only going to be two. There's only going to be two posters. So there's only two. Some are going to have t- seven sequels, like the X-Men mm. movie. Unfortunately... What the interesting thing about what we're describing here is that over the last five to ten years, the top ten films of all time, as well as the top ten films of the year, are all character-based um, sequels. Okay, mm-hmm. and we're talking sequels in like the over five. So like Fast and the Furious Nine, Spider-Man f- Six, you know, yeah. Star Wars Episode Seven. Literally, all the top ten films are character-based sequels. So you Mm -hmm. could kind of look at that and kind of having the posters next to each other could be cool. You know, all of the Star Wars or whatever posters next to each other. Yeah, that would be interesting to see. Because you're all right. I mean, it's it's probably fun for a director, by the way. Like, you already have characters established. Yeah. So you could just have fun with them. Oh, it's so easy. And you already know the audience likes them. Yeah. You 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 have that baked-in audience. It's going to quickly make a a base shape. So Personally, yeah. I find like the workflow, just getting that, that base structure together works really well. Just g- grabbing it in Illustrator, putting it together, then drop that in, then yeah. really build it up in Photoshop. So, so right now what we're going to do is we're going to make a, a, a final UI in Illustrator, like we normally mm-hmm. do, right? Uh, based on all these kind of remixes we talked about. And then we're going to throw it into Photoshop and, and build it uh, and Sweet. show how quickly we can sort of pull in these logos. So depending on what you're, uh, what you're putting together... And just okay, so yeah. b- so do like we said with you know the sort of this and uh, kind of style bro. if you are just mm-hmm. joining us, we do, do have a challenge going on right now, so you a can layout like this. Oh yeah, mm-hmm. get involved as well. Deadlines in twenty six minutes. Make an infographic as well. They happen to be Illustrator infographics, so you, you can do like that. literally so follow circle. along. Yeah, and maybe win when you're a creative club. Boom, boom. All right, yeah, some, like, there was, oh yeah, I was really disappointed with the, (laughs) um, I like He-Man, but we could talk about, you know, obviously games or toys that didn't make it, didn't make good movies at all, like somebody mentions in here, Mario Brothers. Just like He-Man Masters of the Universe was a horrible movie. I, I like uh, this came up. Maybe, uh, Why no Metroid movie? I don't know. But the Mario one, right? It's interesting. They they had a bunch of different directors and actors they were supposed to get for that film, and I think it was like Tim Burton, like all these like incredible directors like talked about it. Mm-hmm. At the last minute, they rushed to choose this this director who had maybe done one other film or something, and it mm-hmm. it was like rushed. They had to like they wasted some money. But it also had nothing to do with the story of Super Mario Brothers, if you oh. recall. It, it basically yeah. sort of introduced characters that weren't the actual main character. Ah. It was all these sort of weird, the boss wasn't a real boss. But if you recall, the villain was, um, who was the villain? The villain's like this famous. The villain, um, for, I can't actually remember in the, cause it, it was so Mario random, though, like Mario in a space world. So it's for the Super Mario Bros. bad the guy dinosaur. was a famous director, he was the director of Easy Rider. What was that guy's name? Um, I don't know. Judge Dredd was also good. Dennis Hopper. Dennis there Hopper. we go, Matthew Manning. So Dennis Hopper is playing the Super Mario, like, King Koopa. Huh. It's so weird. He also starred as the villain in Waterworld. Another, yeah. Another classic, oh. strange... Uh, I think they spent all that money on the Universal Studios, like, Waterworld mm-hmm. section. That was an incredible what, moment What did you press to... Everything's hiding. How did you unhide? Oh, F. Oh, and tab. Okay. Flash, Flash Gordon, yeah. Ah. Uh. <laughs> Remember him and Ted? Wasn't was Flash Gordon and Ted? Was that they Flash talked Gordon? about it? Yeah. I mean, didn't they hang out with him and like yeah. uh, party with him or something? Yeah. Wasn't I think he in so. Ted Two as well? Wasn't uh, that Flash been. Gordon? I'm pretty sure it was in Ted. Flash Gordon. 
being the merciless. He was like quarterback for the New York Jets. There's a whole scene right. in that movie where it's like football, like related. It's funny. If we're gonna talk about the Super Mario movie, you got to talk about the the Masters of the Universe film starring Dolph Lundgren and Courtney Cox from Friends, and oh. Coach Strickland from Back to the Future. It's like the funniest really? group. I actually I happen to horrendous. love Masters of the Universe, the film. Yeah. It like Super Mario Brothers had the problem that it was basically had nothing to do with the storyline of of the animated yeah. series or the characters. Um, Masters of the Universe is a really solid 90s, 80s um, mm -hmm. action. Those are usually, that's those are the ones that I like. It's always Yeah, it's fun. Courtney Cox. Courtney Cox is on the poster. Look, that's her with the dark hair. <laughs> but look, she doesn't get name. She's not on the, she doesn't get the name. Yeah, she was, uh, yeah, she wasn't anyone. There you go. Oh, they had a problem with his voice. That's it. Who's? Because Dolph Lundgren, you know, you have, um, he man who obviously like talks English and Dolph Lundgren had a thick accent. So I they didn't give him any lines. They didn't give him a lot of lines. Oh, right, 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 right. Okay, yeah, yeah, yeah. He didn't say very yeah. much. And they were going to dub over his voice or something like that. And they're like, no, 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 I'll work on it. Some big situation like that. What's sad is that neither of those got great video games. There was never a Masters of the Universe or a He Man NES game, mm -hmm. right? There was mm -hmm. never. Um, there, were, there was one G.I. Joe arcade game that was pretty cool, but we. I, that it would lend been, itself so well to. They did like games. ten Simpsons games. They did like ten Batman games. Like, what's the deal? Jan Eric, are you uh, Norwegian? Is Jan Eric Norwegian? Do you know Gus? Is Jan Eric? Is he? Jan Eric, where are you from? <laughs> or, Norway. No Zelda movie either, huh? Yeah, that's a shame. Ooh. Switch. Yeah, this is it. Oh, sorry, bobblehead. Sorry. You haven't seen Thor Ragnarok. I watched I it on the on the plane. Did you really like good. it? Really good. good. Yeah, really I, old I school. It's like old of... metal kind of vibes. Oh, I need to go back. A lot of yeah. jokes. Yeah, it was really good. Feel good. It didn't take itself too serious. They were like, "We're gonna, we're just gonna be a fun movie." I was on the plane times. for almost thirty hours though, so I may have been delirious. And you came here all that way just to see us. Yeah, just to see uh, all of you. Just to chop. Thanks, man. Just to chop. Just to off push around Jolie's head, Jolie's head on the screen. And you're from the East Coast. From Washington D.C. Yeah. yeah, sweet. Well, welcome, guys. Welcome to beautiful, sunny San Francisco. Actually, today, as far as we know, we're in a big, windowless room. Still a quick example of like pushing around that info with mm -hmm. that section. So, say you're working with. Here's your, here's your mm -hmm. overall chart. I thought we lay out first, but okay, yep. Mm -hmm. Yep, so here's your structure, like you've got your, like just like your fan of information. So you know that you wanna have like your little nodes of, in, of info. So you don't need to use everything. Mm -hmm. Usually less is more depending on um, purpose. So if it's gonna be something that's printed, you can usually have a bit more info. Um, web graphics, if you've got too much info, just can become a problem really quick, because you need to, Zoom and most people on on mobile now. So let's zoom out. Let me uh, let me prescribe what I want to see for this layout. Okay. So here's here's what I'm thinking. So for each slice of the pie, um, let's let's say that these are all uh, sci-fi tech movies. All right. So movies like Hackers, movies like Swordfish that that have a sort of an internet theme, and each each uh, slice is represented by periods of time, right? So this is like the '90s. This is the 2000s. And the size of the head will be relative to the to the box office, and this axis, like so, the closest to the exterior is where the biggest box office films are going to be. Yeah. Mm -hmm. So you could. And so uh, that's just for that top bit. Jump in there. You probably pick a few different movies. Well, you would pick a couple, couple well, of different. Movies. Well, right. So we're just going to do the UI of this first. So let's move this, uh, like. Um, so, so just oh, get this yeah, off the screen. So, so, but zoom out. I'm gonna talk a good, more. Zoom this out. is a good example, though. But zoom out, though, real quick, so I can see the layout. It's just the um, it's just the chart there. I know. I want to zoom out. I'll show you what else I want. Okay. So, can we just take this out for me, real quick. Move it over here, or something. Okay. So we're gonna put the title up top, right? We're gonna put and just put like lorem ipsum title, you know, right here at the top. Mm -hmm. 
What does that do? No, do lore myths and title. So like a full a full lore myths and title. Yep. Okay. Yep. Okay. So at the top we're gonna have a big title. Um, and below this categorized guy in the middle. So boom, we're gonna have a big title. Alright. I'm gonna move this guy. Why are these things not locked? Alright, it's not locked anymore. All right, so now below, we might do some kind of a... Yeah. Something with sequels, because I like that. So let's say we're doing something where we've got the posters for movies like Back to the Future Part 3. We'll figure out that in a second, but I like how this might look, because some of the sequels are going to have, like I said, like eight. Mm -hmm. So we'll figure that out in a second, but I wanted to sort of think about having the movie posters kind of called out below yeah. for whatever reason. And also it can so link up, back. right? So if you've got this many, if you've got that many sections to your like above chart, you might choose the same number and choose like a feature one for each for each section. Right. Which so could like link up to the base. So each slice, right, so each slice is going to be like a period in time. So this will be like the 90s. Let's say they're each 10 year periods. like it. And then, let me just zoom in here. Um, so then from there, uh, we probably want to use, actually, maybe this would be a good example for the typography. Uh, would we use the posters? We would just use the posters, because then you can drop the squares in, just kind of sure. show. All right, so let's say that we're using that rectangles represent the posters. So we got all these different posters. And also and titles. Titles are, are very, so d being descriptive and being able to label the information is sometimes an afterthought, but it should be something that you think of um, straight away. Well, and also, like, the key thing here is you got to take a step back, right? So, like, let's, let's take a step back. We're zooming out. Can you read this? You know, the mm. reason I put the title goes here is if we hadn't have, if it wasn't that big, you wouldn't be able to read it. What's the point, right? Yeah. Um, so sometimes, yeah, you got to really sort of that take a step back. That is the point about the um, conversation prism was designed as a poster. So you, it is viewed online a lot, but it, it is a, uh, it's a print layout in terms of the sizing and the way that we've got the text laid out in there. Actually, so maybe what we do is this. Maybe for each one, it's like the top three or something, and they can sort of fit, can set, you know, they sort of get smaller as they go in, because otherwise That's it's going to cool. get a bit chaotic. Yeah. Okay, so we're just going to do three for so, each of the ten years. Yeah. Or you could have like a, yeah, exactly. Or you could have like a feature and then equally splice it into four beneath. So the, the fact that we've got 90s there within the circle, um, that's something that we ran into with Conversation Prism is just being able to like clearly label because we've got about like five different rings that we need text on. Yeah, and um, sometimes what they'll do with the titles, oh, it's so crazy. So like 90s is the easiest one, right? Because that's like the 12 o'clock. But what do you do? I've seen people take the title. In fact, I saw it in some of the infographic examples. They were sort of putting, when you're doing stuff like this, you might put the title upside down because you <laughs> might think it needs to go, you know, like yeah. words wrapped around. That's, that's not it. You know, it should definitely sort of work. Um, Without turning it. Yeah, without turning. Right, so we're keeping yeah. each one of these slices equal because they're that's fine, right? So they're just equal decades. That could work, yeah, that works. Yeah, so you just... So it's just always a good idea. You just create a layer. Like if you're working in Photoshop, just create a layer with like your title goes here, and just maybe even just group it and call it like uh, um, movie, like movie one, and then just push it around, push those around as much as you can. Um, and like I was saying before, if you just keep it as simple as possible, like just some text with a box, rather than trying to lay in um, all your movie posters, your file will start getting really large too if you start pushing. Uh, Mm -hmm. uh, images in too early so that like um, 
file management just really comes into it when you're working with so many layers and so much information. Also typos and that kind of thing. But you just want to be as clean as possible because there's so much info. It's easy to like copy and paste things wrong. All right, so I'm trying to figure out, so okay, I'm just sort of thinking quickly here, but basically the SQL area will fill at the very least this, you know, I, I was thinking it would sort of take up that whole space at the bottom, but it could be the kind of thing where the, the SQLs bit sort of takes up half of that bottom bit, and then maybe we do more of the heads here, because I do like the heads, I like how the heads were looking. Mm -hmm. So let me just move that here, just kind of think about it. All right, so I'm just gonna group, I'm just gonna take everything, we, I'm just gonna take every rectangle and shrink it. So remember, this is just like, this is a UI of an infographic. This is not a design, but because we're using kind of clip art icon stuff, it kind of, you, you kind of do need to kind of jump back for sizing and stuff. Um, all right, so let's see, we can get maybe six more, all right, six total. And on this side, we'll use something like this space to do some kind of a... Yeah. With the heads. Because what we might find is, like, maybe we could put the heads um, in order of how much money they've made kind of a thing. Yeah. And also, if you're using movie posters of sequels, you're almost creating, like, a natural bar chart yeah. of length of sequel. Mm -hmm. Totally. So how many sequels there are. So. A lot of times if you just grab all the information that's there and you put it on the screen, you'll notice that it kind of like falls into its own layout. So like even you could have a bar graph, say like this, and it could just be the stacked posters of different uh, um, like Star Wars and it could be Indiana Jones and they just kind of, they'd create their own natural chart of like how, met, how like long the series is. So. So you could do it with all your favorite series. So yeah, like and then the how you uh, Lord of the how you set them up, like whether you have the longest one at the top, and then does it filter down? Exactly. So they would kind of like um, create their own size too. So because if you've got a series that has six posters, mm -hmm. but you've obviously got one that's quite long and then the other that's small. One thing is that um, when you've got tons of information in one category, so say if you were talking about just one film and you had one film poster set up against like six posters like this, um, you can end up dwarfing that small information too much and you end up with like a really large difference in sizing. Yeah. So it can become a problem with your, um, just with your layouts. Mm -hmm. So you end up with a huge um, focal point and then empty space. The good thing about infographics is um, you can just kind of fill the space with additional information. So say if we were doing this on movies and you had that slice just on um, on horror movies, if you've got a little additional um, bit of info, you well, could just... We'll do it on it. this. So we're doing tech movies, so do it on that. On what? Tech movies? Yeah. Okay. So, so do it on this. Yeah. So say you've got uh, in the top right um, corner of like the 90s pie, say you've got um, a movie name that's really short, like... Uh, um, what's that one about that robot? Mm. There's that shock Mac circuit uh, or something. Or like Mac if you had a pretty, mm, okay. yeah, pretty short um, movie title, you might look up just like a really cool fact, like someone that was in the most um, tech movies of the 90s and just like do a little call out. So there's always ways to like add to, uh, add to your layout. So what we've got here is the basis basically of an infographic. So you might look at something that's... Uh, incredibly detailed and really well illustrated but at the base like it's really just some s like circles and then you've got your text next to it well right because remember you're explaining yourself at a low fidelity mm -hmm. so you're thinking of these big ideas kind of like with web design or with building a home you know the backyard is going to have a pool somewhere and mm -hmm. the relationship of the pool to the you know what i mean it's just your you do have to think of that final composed thing but you're ex sort of explaining yourself and kind of remixing quickly. We use the term remix. I think remix is like a, a, an interesting concept because you're forcing yourself to make variations, mm -hmm. um, but also sort of reminding yourself that you need to sort of make time for, for that stuff. All right, so I'm just going to back at these. So Shakti, to answer your question, Taylor on the ends from Australia, like what part? Uh, Queensland. I'm from Noosa. Australia, okay. so uh, kind of like on the right side, near the middle. Okay. 
right yeah. side near the middle. <laughs> yeah, like slow that. surf town. <laughs> Nothing big. Jesse here is from uh, DC. Have you guys spent much time in San Francisco before? This is my first time in San Francisco. Yeah, many times. Lots of time. This is my first time enjoying it. It's nice. fun. Yeah, man. Yeah, Good. really cool. And then, so maybe what we're doing is actors and actresses. Maybe we're so break that. And then maybe instead of actors, it's directors, because maybe it's like Spielberg is the one with like the, the big numbers. Um, yeah. But you see how see how this is sort of coming together, right? Like. Uh, and then also like, the top here we could put like if you're going to make your own uh, make your own infographic, you can just say you're doing about movies and you just love horror movies. There's no reason that you can't do that. Just grab best horror movies from like mm -hmm. the um, like 70s, 80s, 90s and just do something to something that you love. And also work to your strengths. So say if I was basically typography and that was my um, thing, yeah. you can just work with it thinking I'm gonna use majority typography within these sections. So you could, even if it's just the best movie that you love for 90s, you could use mm -hmm. that whole pie slice, sketch everything out in there and just have it like a whole piece is like this mm -hmm. one big piece of typography and then what looks like something simple when you just do the one piece, if you multiply that then by eight and you've got the eight sections, it, en it ends up being something that's like quite beautiful in the end, especially when you add its own tile above and then some information below. Yeah, I think probably, do you think a common mistake people would make with infographics is probably adding like too much like designed, d design detail? Like I think, Yeah, know. you can get bogged down really quickly. Um, you almost want to like really get your fundamentals straight. So like what we're doing, like just get your layout in. Yeah. Make sure that you've got everything covered because if you're kind of revisiting later and it's something that needs to be in there, that you you're probably going to run into trouble. Yeah. So like one thing that we might run into is that like these 80s and 90s are just taking too much space up within the the chart itself. Mm -hmm. So you might want to run those around the outside and maybe just have some call outs around that ring. Mm -hmm. Because once someone sees, oh, this one's 80s, this one's 90s, it's they pretty obvious. It. Yeah. So it's kind of like a secondary detail. You want to give all the attention to the most important thing, which here would be the posters and the different sizes of them. And then also, if you're illustrating it, you want that. Yeah, so, so mm -hmm. one of the problems, if you look on the screen here, right, is so when you duplicate the information, as you're going around a circle, what you realize is the, the bottom half of the circle, you need to make the decision, like how are you going to make these, so like this kind of works, but then when they're upside down, so basically these two slices here should be upside down, right? You with me? Uh, mm -hmm. Should be upside down? Should be, up, well I'm going to fix that, and or all of be, the titles. Should be the right way up. Yeah, yeah, should, right, yeah. should, be, should be upside down from what yeah. they are now, right. Um, but I've noticed in various infographics that Sometimes people keep uh, keep them upside down. Oh, I think I want to get the titles up here. Uh, titles are just need to be spun around like yeah. this. So this is no, this is just this a wireframe. This is one frame. reason that you um, like you want to keep all these nodes. So you'd keep like if you know you're going to be working with a poster and then you're going to be working with some text like create that as its own little folder and just like name that like movie one or something. And then you can duplicate that and then you know you've got those natural groups of how you would be laying it out. So mm -hmm. if you keep your poster and your text and everything separate, then you're gonna be trying to regroup that each time and select everything separately. So or if maybe you just smart yeah. objects or something. So as you group your information as you go. So you'd go text with a poster, then your next one up would be logically like a whole pie piece. And then I just do the whole pie piece. That's sometimes too much. For this, I'm doing just the whole pie piece. Yeah. Or I'm doing actually three pie pieces at mm -hmm. time. Sometimes it's like when you make the folders, it's just like mm. every cr friggin' click, just to m it's too much sometimes. Yeah. Yeah, yeah. You're using, are you guys using art boards in here? No. Uh, yeah. Mm -hmm. Oh, yeah, right. So that is, I'm, I haven't yes. been, I haven't been messing with those though. Yeah. So that's a newer feature that, that popped up and is pretty awesome. Yeah. You know what would be good to almost for some of this is uh, like, I know we're talking about Photoshop this week, but uh, Adobe XD has a repeat grid feature, which yeah. is kind of nice. Yeah. 
We work so, a lot, mm -hmm. a lot in Illustrator, so we're pushing more towards um, Photoshop with this, but we do a lot of our work in Illustrator yeah. and then do a lot of finishing in um, Photoshop. Do you, because um, you made the pie chart in in Illustrator, right? Mm -hmm. How did you do that? Uh, no, this one I is. typically just do a um, a star with a zero radius on the inside. That's exactly what I thought you did. Yeah. With a zero radius. Yeah. Do you for... have a better way for doing that? No, that's just kind of how I figured you did it. But did you do zero radius for one zero or two? Zero radius on you first, so that's your, um, your, well, it's just radius one and two, right, of like the insides. Mm -hmm. So you just go zero, mm -hmm. and then you make whatever you want. Like it can just be 10 or whatever, because um, that's just okay. your spines. Nice. And then just increase it to whatever you want. Um, yeah. I'm just going to show people this real fast again. So. Uh, star tool, that's how you can make a pie chart. Mm -hmm, Select the star mm -hmm. tool, click once, and then what you're saying is take that to zero. Yeah, take that out to zero. And then however many slices you want, mm -hmm. right? So yep. I'm gonna have an odd number, click OK, and then there it is. Yeah. Nice. And I usually like stars just go for like a, uh, like a three point, a three point. Yeah. yeah. And I think so. Let's do this. Like, because if you you have a regular star, but let's see, if you hold down the option, yeah, you're gonna you get a different. A bit, yeah, it kind of like makes it a bit more fluffy. Yeah, yeah, and then you can mm -hmm. kind of round off the edges. So mm -hmm. that's a good point with like say charts like this. If you're gonna be working with like just the base shapes and you're doing something a bit more vectory, you can get things pretty interesting pretty quick just by working with those base shapes and using like a wiggle on it. Mm -hmm. um, or anything like that, really. Yeah. Just effects on that on that base shape. All right, so we're gonna pick this. We're just gonna move forward, and we're gonna build this out as a design. <laughs> if you want to, um, if you're still on Illustrator, I can show you a pretty good tip on um, yeah. using a bar chart too. Well, you're an Illustrator, so you can open up Illustrator here. Right? Okay. Yeah, yeah. But, so, so, this is one thing that we do sometimes. So, if you were, so if you've got like a base kind of graphic, mm -hmm. and you've got this to these values. go if you're making something that's like radial uh, window brushes you just turn that into uh just a, sorry, I'm probably going a bit too fast. So you just oh, turn it into like a it. custom pattern brush. Oh yeah, I see what you're doing. That's clever. And you can do this. That is clever. You can increase it. Yeah, like that. So essentially you took those three bars, you turned it into a brush. Yeah, and then so you drew it, a circle. it's still keeping its value because it's technically still the, uh, so you can reduce the, hmm. So you still need to repeat it. Oh no, one second. I'll see if we can fix it this way. That's cool. Right, it still needs to be sort of accurately. Yeah, so in. it'd be a pattern brush with a... 25 seconds to get your designs in for the uh, submission uh, infographic health challenge, if you will. So sometimes cool. you need to just play around with the scaling until you get it right. But yeah, and you could you could increase the size of the stroke. You should be able to double click on that stroke and edit it too, right? But yes. that's awesome. I guess I'm, I've never thought of using it that way. But. If you increase it to one level, yeah, there you go. So you need to play around with it a little bit, but I'm not sure if that's a, a hack, but it's a good way to basically just jump in, like copy over your bar chart and then it's, it's a really easy way to do it, say if you've mm -hmm. got a chart that looks more like, like this. So make them different so they're not all the same. Mm -hmm. So 
So what turns into like a relatively, starts out relatively simple, you can still brush this. Hmm. That's a lot of, okay. So you could just have a bar chart that you've found somewhere and then you've got almost like a pretty, mm -hmm. a pretty awesome radial. It's really cool. Yeah, just some That's really, awesome. So because you know where your uh, start point is, mm -hmm. it's still true to the values. So. So this is this is where you know infographic design can get quite abstract, you know, and it's like mm -hmm. sometimes. I look at complex visualizations like this and I realize that the audience is just gonna kind of gloss over sometimes unless it's extremely labeled and then it's like, oh, you, yeah. you have to label it so much to have it make mm -hmm. sense. It's, uh... So that's just like a quick way that sometimes awesome. we'd be mm -hmm. exploring, like in that base layer, like we're talking about structures. Mm -hmm. So it's just like a an extremely layered, basically just donut job. So you yeah. just... Yeah. I love it. So that's one way, like, say if we were working with a timeline around the, uh, around the outside, that was um, just like, basically like this. You can just keep, uh, just keep layering it. So you might have this outside line that's a timeline, and then you've got like a, a chart like this in the center. So that's one way we would just quickly put together some ideas for how we want to do it. And then you would probably mm -hmm. style this up. So you could drop this over or you could um, just quickly expand it. And then you've got like the individual layers that you could. Uh, yeah. So like the way we could, it. where we could drop quick. this in on the one we're about to design is like that could be directors, right? Each color is a different director. And we could have made that chart. We could have, you know, Spielberg, George Lucas, etc. Right, as we have actually done. Like, jump back real quick. Mm -hmm. Jump back. Just do Apple. Just do this. Apple T. Apple Tab. Right. So in the bottom right-hand corner, right, we've got profitable directors. We've got profitable actors. Um, theoretically, instead of having them so obviously kind of broken out as you know photo and number next to it, yeah, right here in the corner, this whole area right here could be replaced by that. Yeah. Complex yeah, and circle. You just have the, yeah. Like names like that. So that's right. when you you're getting into more um, like it is kind of hard to digest. So you're going for more of like a visual look where you're kind of like trying to make it look complex almost. I know. So, that's the problem. Yeah. It's like uh, when is when is it ever actually a good choice to use? I don't know. The point that I think we're raising though is we're using the word abstract, but data as art is actually I think a broad topic, for, especially for this for a Behance mm -hmm. kind of audience. Because we've noticed a lot of players in this space and kind of the visual storytelling infographic space, they're making a ton of money off of these infographic posters. Yeah. There's like Star Wars character posters, drink posters. Like there's mm -hmm. companies that are that have teams of people that are just making products to be sold in stores. Um, and so those graphics can sometimes be very abstract. Um, Let's, yeah. let's go back and build. We'll I like, like how you're down. able yeah. to. Yep. Yeah. So we're going to build this. So, so delete lot all of this information crap. in one space. Which we just, was it, So delete all these other art layers, and we're just going to use that as our canvas. Yeah. Okay. I think a color wheel, or at least that wheel that you're making with the bars, is good for like something out of a hundred or percentages. Like what? Yeah. It could what would be, be an anything. example. Well, like what? Um. Uh. I really like. What? Uh, hit movies uh, by genre out of mm -hmm. like what percentage were horror movies within the past 20 years and is that like I'm just thinking yeah, for a circle yeah. this is like a hundred percent bar all the way around and horror movies are 20 percent I don't know I'm, you can do it uh, is that making the information um, easier to digest or are you basically justifying a complex thing just for I just I wanted to make something complex yeah. but that's what I'm like saying right colors. is is with yeah. infographics you, mm -hmm. uh, you really have to sort of take a step back and say is this gonna be readable is this gonna make sense the complexity to a different audience the complexity sometimes draws you in though like Sometimes, yeah. Because mm -hmm. I, I, as a whole, like the complexity actually creates something really beautiful. So th I think that that's, yeah, that's where true. you kind of get into data art. Like it's almost yeah. you're not really doing it for the like the data sake and for someone to actually read it. It's more like people be like, oh, what's this about? Oh, well, like movie run times and how long they go for. But they won't. You like you wouldn't actually go in and be like, oh, this one's a particular percentage. Like it's just 
you look at it as a whole. It's like you're looking at it from a very far up view and it's just for kind of like consumption as a whole. You wouldn't really use that kind of layout for um, needing that information. So if it's something where someone needs mm -hmm. to see this is 20%, it's almost a hard way to do it. Okay. Yeah. Yeah. So you're like right. it's it's like you're looking at a comp like a composition, like an artwork. You're kind of just looking at it as a whole. All right. So let's so zoom into the sequels or profitable section there, and let's just talk about how we're going to do that. Zoom in to the to the sequels to that section there. So mm -hmm. the order that they're in, so it it should probably go. Actually, here's what we could do. The, the easiest version for that might be. Sequels are fun instead of profitable. So change the title okay for me. Do sequels are fun instead of profitable. Just T, t hit T. Yeah. Okay, Pro uh, it's our fun. Now, if, if we ranked sequels from the most sequels kind of down, um, that way all we would need to do is put the posters. We don't need to explain yeah. You, you know what I mean? Like yeah. the, the most the most at the top and that's it. Sequels are fun. So do this for me. Make stack, you know, the most should be there and then it should be concentric as it goes down, you know? So like two down here. Two, four, five. Oh, stacking eight. as stacking yeah. as it goes. Yeah. Because I really want to remind people about the sequels as it mm -hmm. relates to this. Because there's just a lot of these like character driven sequels. Um and then to the right we'll do We'll do heads in the where those circles are. The numbers can be super simple, something like 9.8b. Well, as just the totals, directors and actresses. Yeah, that's cool. That's cool. Could be movie studios. Like, can be like Pixar, Marvel, DC, you know, that kind of thing. Um, but that feels about right, because you basically got this huge hero thing in the middle, like and then a couple central. kind of like a medium thing in the bottom left, and then a couple kind of Mm -hmm. Things kind of taking up a medium space on the right. How would you grab that full row? Would you, you do one at a time. If you want it just... Here's how you do it, guys. So you take your, your mouse and you do control. And so that's how you find layers. So I'm holding shift and clicking control. And then I just selected those layers. See that? Right. So when I hold shift, when I hold shift and click control again on that one, it's going to unselect that one. Right? So generally... I think you can like in that structure. We, there's like well, a grip, there's like a grip selection for um well, for Photoshop. But well, this is why I wanted to use Illustrator. Yeah. This is this is exactly what yeah. I this is exactly yeah. one. Yeah. So um, we use like Illustrator a lot for this this base stuff yeah, because there's I think you're right. just like group well, selection. But that's okay. That's okay. So anyway, here's what we're gonna do. Right. We're just gonna make yeah, that all individual selection. Yeah, that's fine. Yeah, you can do. You can drag a box around it. In Photoshop, and what? Uh, and grab, you grab, you grab a box around and do what? Or do uh, oh, use that, your move tool. One? That's a great top, and that operates. Okay, as so a, I've uh, dragged the box around. Now what? Or yeah, not that, not that no, tool. This one's use that's the one above like it, a, like a cropping this box. One? Yep. Move tool, and then as long as auto select is on, just click and drag mm. a marquee box around whatever you want. And don't click don't on it. Yeah, there there you go. And that should select all of them. Yeah, Ooh, there you go. So it's that's more like Illustrator. Yeah. See, I just I like Illustrator because I've got like this infinite canvas that I can zoom out of. Yeah. Yeah. They definitely like work together. Actually, so. instead of tech movies, let's just go back to these like character. What were we calling superhero movies? Yeah, superhero movies. I'll have to I'll have to show you something in XD that you guys will want in, in Illustrator and Photoshop. Yeah. Can I show you? It take you like take two seconds. Yeah. yeah. No, I don't yeah. know if you've Pop played it at all with XD again. Sorry, a little diversion, but I have just some text and an image, and it's this thing called Repeat Grid. Mm -hmm. So I can mm -hmm. turn that on with that stuff selected, and then I can go. Brrr, yeah. Brrr. Isn't oh, that nice. Yeah, I like that. And then mm -hmm. this is independent, so I can say, you know, the dark crystal or whatever. Mm -hmm. yeah, that's so the really data quick. can be different, but the um, the style is all unified, so I can even come back oh, in so here. So it's got a master in there. Yeah, and I can kind of tighten that up and all that jazz. I feel like I use oh. Apple D for so much of that, because to me, I don't know, you know what I mean? Like, I can always remake it, I can always group some stuff, and then kind of, you know what I mean? Mm -hmm. I find myself going back to that to make patterns often. Yeah, and you're like, right, just... I know. Click, I know. click and drag, and then you, you do command I E. Da, da. I know. I know. Yeah. Okay, so so instead of tech movies, we're gonna focus more on the superheroes. Oh, it looks like so the contest is up. 
Oh, the content. We're done with the, the challenge, the very last challenge. So I don't mean to interrupt, but we do have designs for it. Yeah, jump in. Let me get them. Let me open them up. One second. You guys ready for this? The last chance to win. Oh, the infographics. Yeah, these for are the infographics. Great. So the big thing is, is like we gave them some templates to kind of get them just jump started. We gave them three of them, so you might recognize some of those graphics yep. in a second. Um, and uh, uh, all right, just give me a second. You can continue to work and okay. continue to okay, talk. Okay, I'm going to need a second to set this up. Go back up the title. The title? Yeah. I was just going to quickly style a section out. Oh, you well, do. Go that's yeah, go on. I was just going to finish the layout, though. Yeah. So yeah. Go well, up to I'll the just... title. Go up to the title. Okay. Okay. <laughs> and do superhero movies and fill the space. Superhero All movies. Caps. Yeah. Okay. Got it. Superhero movie um, roundup. I'd like the word roundup below and do it all caps for the for all those like. Roundup got a hyphen. So, Rasim, if you're wondering about the Photoshop thing that I was doing, I was it's an auto select. So you're using your move tool. You have auto select checked. You can draw marquee box around stuff. Yeah, yeah, that's a good one. The move tool. Oh, I, don't I need to use the move tool more. Okay. Yeah, and I'm like I'm kind of old school, so I'm not used to having this well, auto select. Well, because I've just on. been doing you mouse over where you think the layer is and hitting mm -hmm. Control, which mm -hmm. then pulls up that hidden yeah light, and list. You can yeah. dig down to that yeah. one. You want to take a look at these? We do. Yeah, okay, let's show. Sure. All right, let's dive into this. All right, well, thank you so much for everybody for entering in this challenge. So essentially what we have, just so you know, just to kind of give you guys a quick preview. Oh, let's turn that there. Switched up. They have, uh, these are the templates, so they could use some of these graphics. Right. Just so you know what they could have started with. And those are great. And let's dive into it. We have Mariangel. Uh, Brasino. It's beautiful. Yeah, right. You know, when we when we look at stuff like this, you know, it's like mm -hmm. this this she might be a, a very ta she is clearly a very talented illustrator. But when you think of a layout like that, you know, when you think of the you know you've got this hero in the middle that could be replaced by a photograph, and you could you know do a different style mm -hmm. for the icons, but still keep that typography. Mm -hmm. uh, but brilliant, yeah. brilliant, and I love that you've Super made everything fun. from scratch. Yeah, I also think that it's good to uh, always bring things. Um, down to being related. So like less diseases could be pointing to, I'm not sure how you relate that to her body, but like lose weight could be related to a waist, good oh, humor good could point. be like related to the smile, the smile yeah. more energy could, Muscles. like it, it is coming from the weight, but yeah. it could like kind of like it could, relate more it to, the, relate to the base. More. Yeah. Good call. Oh, maybe but she did that with the mouth. Maybe it was because it was pointing with the mouth. All oh, the other ones were, because it, it was coming from where there was like a, yeah. could have been a thing All else. right, Mitty. Let's dive into this. Cats and humans. So, you know, just some feedback on this. Like, one, one, th and, th and this is like a good start. We'll, we'll call that a start, right? Because one of the challenges is you don't just want to put like a word and then a definition below it because then you've just got like a bunch of word and definitions like on the screen. But layout wise and simplicity, I do like how sort of simple it is. This to me is sort of like, yeah, like the start of a great mm -hmm. thing, right? Yeah. Also, okay. like you can grab some, put some icons together, and maybe do because infographics can also have a like an element of an instructional graphic. So it could be like do a little icon of like how to stroke a cat without making it angry. Mm -hmm. You could um, kind of like have yeah. how to hug a cat for warm or like communion. Maybe you've got like a funny graphic. It's how to talk to cats or. Yeah, and I think what a good infographics they it, it's just everything everything is done for a reason. Like the size of the text might mean something, the color means something. Exactly. Here everything's just kind of equal and it's it doesn't matter where it's pointing to. So there's yeah. not a lot of context. Whatever. Well, but there's there's no there's no uh, traditional data, which is why I think that as it, as it stands yeah. it's actually not that bad because yeah, it is just word and definition. They are equally placed. I do like the layout spacing. And I like that she's got yeah. this pattern at the top. What she could do is, you know, a bit more meaning to the icons at the top. Yeah, as Taylor said, maybe icon next to the titles. Mm -hmm. Maybe. The whole thing could be cut down the middle, cats on one side, you know, maybe. But the the spacing, the layout does work. It's not Yeah, you know, that's very true. Yeah. Super strong. Like good. this is yeah. 
Nice and weighted down here. Yeah, yeah good from a design standpoint. Love it. Good job, Mitty. Diving into this next one. Tima. Hopefully Tima's with us. Well, sorry, what's the topic again? What's the topic? Uh, health. Health. Just health related anything. I love the visual style. I don't know if that's oh, I, from the... I love like it. The thin plus burger I love it. equals um, larger. And then larger plus oh, burgers healthy are so food good, though. makes you back to what you were. So that <laughs> definitely really makes sense. But so that's like, in essence, it's like a picture graph. Really. I like how there's no text here. Yeah, you know, yeah. Like I get so, it. The colors, it shows the colors like are brilliant. Yeah. You can definitely have infographics without any um, any text in them. So yeah. in one way, you, you're dodging language as a barrier yeah. completely. Which, and trust yep. me, we have people from all of, I think somebody had to go, it's like 2 a.m., like Europe's yeah. kind of asleep, and everybody's, this is like, you know, English is <laughs> not their first language. So um, just, But just some, some obvious feedback on that one. Mm. There are what we would describe as like empty spaces that, that, would, that feels to me like an error or an omission. Either is not good, right? Yeah. So mm -hmm. you have space that isn't being taken up. Sure, it's good that you omitted the text. I don't know if that was by choice. Mm -hmm. The illustration style, the color ch choices, like, yeah, that's cool if you made mm -hmm. that from scratch. Yeah, that is cool. Yeah, Very cool. you could definitely just grab, like, like I was saying, group all your individual elements, and you could just quickly stack them, align them. And then you could crop that in real tight, and then you've got like a much more um, Yeah, that would have made graphic. more sense. Exactly. So you could just go stack all lined right. up together. Yeah. Tight. Yeah. If you yeah. were going for that, because I'm assuming that she just didn't have the time to fill it. They in. were on this. It's almost like a positive negative thing. Yeah, though, well, it's like a math equation, is what it is. Yeah. It's like an it's like an emoji sentence. Yeah, I yeah. think for the blue, it's like positive, and then there's like a red circle. But, but this, the was, this the person was too heavy. That's why they ended up. Yeah, and they sunk down. Yeah. yeah, they sunk down. Yeah, so yeah. there's a lot of things <laughs> you can read into that. No, yeah, that's good. A good start. Oh, uh, dive into this one. All right, Esther, e Esther, Freda, Safran. One key thing that I just have to mention, the first thing that I see as like, I'll be your client here, the 25% like uh, number is white. And the, the yellow that it's sitting on is quite a, a light yellow. So like the first problem I have with this would, would be that readability. You really have to like take a step back and look at it. I like to think of this, you're looking at the graphic on your phone at this far away, right? Mm -hmm. um, yeah. The red is also hard to read. You've got the yellow bread typography on a quite dark light blue. That's just not a, that's just not, usually a b better choices with the mm -hmm. typography colors. The type below it is, that's quite a lot of type. It's also in impossible to read from a distance, but it's just big enough to read if you're up close. Generally, this is pretty, this is, this is not too bad. Yeah. I mean, this is like a, sna like a the, complex snackable. This is what we call that. Yeah. I like the color in the background. It's good. It's clean. Like it's nice like that uh, you pulled out, put the effort into the icons around the outside. Um, dairy. The title is too close to the top of the page. So with yeah, the rules of... Oh, sorry. Oh. I, I, that's my fault. Okay. I was just trying to it's zoom still a bit in too on close parts. To the top. Okay, okay. But something about that title is not working for me. But generally, I like this. And I love the choice of that. Was this in the template? Did, did this person create these uh, icons? Some of, the some icons? of these bars but the could icons? have been... Like the meat icon and stuff? No. Cool, those are beautiful. I mean, oh. and, and not to say that they just like made them today. I don't oh, know. Oh, grab them, whatever it is. Yeah, yeah, beautiful though. Beautiful choice. But hey, Esther's also already won, so they're already like, you know. Oh, yeah. They're already killing that, it. So good work though. No wonder you've won before because you're talented. That, that, Mahdi. Does, that does bring up the last graphic though because you technically don't need to, well, you don't have to have dairy and, and meat there and that kind of thing. Because if you've got a very obvious visual, yeah, that's like, true. you could just have Maybe. milk. And you could just have meat, and it's, you if know it's what it means. Especially with something like milk, where the typography is like self-labeled on the mm -hmm. item, you know that kind of thing. Exactly. Um, okay, one pet peeve I have is justifying paragraphs of type. Like I think that's like never a good idea, especially when you look at like the clinical practice type. Like when I you get the rivers. Here's it's river. just like what? What? Why would you ever justify the type? I, I literally for type with. With that narrow of a, of a uh, yeah, never gonna work. But I do love the illustration style, mm -hmm. and I love this sort of comic book esque layout. Like you could remove the paragraph of types on the left, and like each person could be saying something, and it's like a linear comic strip. Yeah, thing. you're gonna break it up. Yeah, this I think has yeah. the most potential of anything we've seen. This is this is potentially a breakthrough. But with yeah. the big block of text on the left, it's just like mm -hmm. this is an illustration with a this is like you this is like a feature story. One yeah. block of text. This is not an infographic because there's too much type. If you've got more than two sentences of type, that's probably one too many. Here you've got like six in a paragraph. That's 
-hmm. Just you can't put paragraphs of type in. And just to and oh, just sorry. to circle back to the illustration, I'm pretty sure that's all custom, all custom work. So. They've yeah, done all that I mean, we, I don't actually know. We don't really know. Oh, okay, I don't know okay. where they got these. So, I don't know if they drew them. If they were and, illustrated, and all you do Mahi, is like... If, you, if you're here and you're watching and you did do all these illustrations, like, let us know what you did and didn't do. Okay, yeah, really yeah. Have. So, say, if you've got that, like, that paragraph of six sentences, if in that, um, that piece of, uh, that paragraph, you're basically referring to the different things within your illustration, just break it out and just assign it to each thing. So if you've got something about doctors, about wheelchairs, is is that about right uh, being in uh, bed, no, this is, just uh, sit it I above this is the different piece. elements, oh, this is and then you've, then you've uh, got an infographic. I think Felicia and not like a storybook. Sorry, uh, Felicia might have submitted one. So I think we might have. I think multiple people are going to benefit from these reviews. So these, this is Felicia. Okay, so so one of, yes, so Felicia, yes, you do have too much type. Um, first, first comment is that. You know, generally, um, you got to reach a bit. Okay, so the structure of the organization, decent to, to great, actually, right? Structure, mm -hmm. you know, the UI, that's pretty solid. Yeah. The typography, you really haven't tried too, too much with it, right? Literally, that's like super, super basic. So I'll just sort of make that comment. Mm -hmm. One thing that I always say about layouts when I see things like this is like, come on, do you really need a white background? Like, seriously, the first decision needs to be, it's not going to be a white background. It's not going to be the aerial type that is the default. You have to start making those decisions. But so much work does go into this to the UI and the structure. Yeah, that I, you know, info. but you do have a lot. But I do, you know, you are sticking with the same icon multiple times. So kind of that's a cool that he, she was able to use the same use icon the same kind of thing. in different ways, yeah. although yeah, it's kind of yeah. the same thing repeated. I'm just glad it all ties sometimes. together. Yeah. yeah, like she says, one in four, one in twenty-four, ninety percent, all yeah. that works. But I do agree with you. Like, she, I think she needed more time to work on the type. And the type, sure. well, and and remember that rule of like two two par two sentences of type in a in like a paragraph is almost one too many. So here you've got three on this far one. That's not too bad. But anyway, so yeah, this is this is a and great start. And I like start. her gut instinct is to group this information. Great, and I love it. And, and I you, love dotted lines. You don't lines. necessarily. See, I was gonna say, I, I, I was gonna say you can actually do blocks of of color. Oh, Maybe could it's be. off oh, sure. white and then sure. the white. Because I yeah. almost feel like these are coupons. Oh, and they could join. Remember, like the other, you know, what I mean, like they could be color blocks that oh, brought yeah. up next to each other, even. But that's good, like uh, you know, unifying that information. Well, and good but, job, but by Felicia. making by breaking it out, it's kind of like a meal where it's not a big bowl of pasta. We're like, oh my god, what's under there? No, it's like, yeah, you know, mashed potatoes here. But she did here, well. You know? Felicia did a great job for like putting this together. And again, this is kind of not her forte. She does a lot of like hand lettering and stuff. So. And S Sasha Nixon yeah. says, "This is someone else's work." Now I get it. Yes, this is this is uh, the group's work. This is cool. Uh, I love the illustration Shakti style. Aurora. I feel like these should be like scratch and sniff stickers. Mm -hmm. I love it. That's oh, cool. Oh, we have one minute. Holy cow! This is my favorite. All right, so let's wrap this up. That's brilliant. Uh, Anita's burgers make you gain. This is really good. Could probably deal with the 90 the, to the 100. The background color changing. I do like that one, though. Hair extensions. Too much type, but but a pretty decent. Too much type, a lot to deal with. Wow. Mm -hmm. Feels very yeah. templatized, feels very unoriginal, but the typography for the title is not actually not too bad. All right. Let's pick a winner. So we have about 30 seconds. All right, let's do it. This one wins. Congratulations yeah. to Shakti. Shock the Aurora. Yeah. And not just because it is very relatable, not because you even put yeah. it in so w. I love it's the typography. The this is super fun. I love We've the typography. We've been about a lot on, uh, on layout. So this has got really good variation to the type. Mm -hmm. It's obviously got uh, emphasis on the points that matter. So yeah. when we're talking about a graphic that's uh, digestible very quickly, this is one. So you can see like crop, filter, and it's a great way to approach Burn this data, curves. this information. Exactly. Like good, yeah. good, good, good way bringing well, that see, together. And you said data, but of course the first thing I noticed, there's no numbers in this. That's, a, that's okay. This is an informative yeah, graphic. You're yeah. using the, the first three letters of that. It's informative, not necessarily information. I just like their, their writing. Their writing is, writing is yeah. really yeah. good. Oh, it's brilliant. They look like, ah. um, like concert posters. Each one of those is like a modern kind of a thing. I love it. So, All right, yeah. Shakti is in the chat. So thank you so much, Shakti. You are a winner. You'll win when your Creative Cloud will contact you. Special thanks here as well. You guys are coming back tomorrow for tomorrow. day three. Yeah, so we'll probably finish off uh, finish off a graphic. We'll do a bit of styling, All and right. then we'll, we'll push through to those final stages.
Sweet. Fantastic. Taylor Crisdale, Jesse Thomas, thanks so much, guys. We'll see, see you guys tomorrow, 9 a.m. Hang out with us then. We'll see you soon.